Hi everyone, welcome to GG Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a mobile game called Mystic Gunner. Released in 2021 by developer Buff Studio, the game takes place in a post-apocalyptic Earth after a half-century-long battle with creatures later known as Ark. The battle has left the world contaminated and humanity near extinction. You are a soldier fighting on the front lines against Ark to save humanity. The game plays in portrait mode instead of a more traditional landscape format. Level progression is based on zones. Each zone has around 3 or 4 missions. There are many similarities to a game that was released in 2019 called Archero. I'll touch on that later in this review. Mystic Gunner feels like a hybrid of Archero and Binding of Isaac, but instead of shooting tears, you're shooting bullets. When you enter the mission, you start in a safe zone with fellow soldiers you can talk to. There's no two-way conversation, but more they have something to say to you. You're given one random power-up to start with, and there's also another power-up you can acquire at the start of each mission. There are shops and medical facilities throughout the mission, but everything except for the random power-up you can find throughout the mission requires you to watch an ad. Luckily, you have the option to skip watching ads, and I haven't come across any ads playing after completing a mission. You start with a handgun, which has a generally slow fire rate. You can potentially find power-ups throughout the mission to increase damage and fire rate. You can also get other perks like Double Shot, Ricochet, which bounces bullets off walls, and Pierce, which allows the bullets to go through your enemies. You will also find weapons, armor, and accessory drops by killing enemies. You will fight a variety of unique enemies, with some having long-range weapons and some having short-range weapons. Some rooms contain mini-bosses. Other rooms contain humans who are trapped, and you can free them once you walk into them. Freeing humans will sometimes award you with items or in-game currency. Ultimately, there is one room with a final boss to complete the level. Based on your exploration, you will be awarded a percentage of completion at the end of the mission which will affect your rewards. Pyrox that are collected throughout the mission do not stay with you afterwards. You have grenades, which do some damage. The damage for each enemy is the same as your base weapon damage. You can also dodge, which essentially negates any damage you would have taken. Even if you dodge into enemy fire, you are immune for that moment. After you've damaged enough enemies, you can release a super attack, which is a bunch of missiles that come down and do substantial damage to every enemy that's in the room. Enemies that shoot bullets sometimes shoot a special bullet that is purple. If you dodge across that bullet, you go into some form of bullet time where enemy fire slows down and your fire rate increases. If you time it right, you can chain your slowdowns effectively by killing enemies and dodging into another special bullet. You are able to free roam in missions. Each room is color coordinated to let you know what the encounter will be. Red rooms mean mini bosses. A red room with a boss symbol means that you're going to be facing the main boss. Orange rooms have human captives to be freed, and green rooms have healing supplies. Each mission for a zone is relatively similar with identical mini bosses and final boss. For those who do not like repetitive games, you may find this fact unenjoyable. Like with most mobile games, you are limited to how much you can play with the use of food. You can hold up to a maximum of 20 food, and each mission requires 5 food to play. Food replenishes over time. You can also gain 5 food up to 4 times a day by watching ads, and you can gain 20 food using 100 gems. Now gems is the game's premium currency. You can gain gems by purchasing with real money or collecting throughout missions. Gems can be used to purchase boxes and skills in the shop. Boxes award you with an equipable item with a randomized rarity. Gold is the standard currency which you essentially collect by killing enemies, collecting random items from leveling up during the mission, and mission completion. Gold and item materials are required to upgrade your items. Gold is also used to enhance your stats. More on that later. The equipment system gives you access to your inventory. You can also equip and unequip items. There is also an option to upgrade your items, boosting the stats. Weapons and armor also change your appearance. Items have a rarity. With each step up in rarity, you get one additional perk for that item. Starting with common, you have one perk. Then there's advanced, rare, and epic, giving you two, three, and four perks. I have not come across any items with a higher rarity, but I can't rule that out. 
Now let's take a look at the inventory system for our Chero, which you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison. It's the same for equipping, upgrading, and combining items. I would hope that there was developer collaboration, because if not, that's plagiarism. The world screen gives you access to your achievements, rewards, and game settings. This is also the main screen in which you would launch your missions. The potential power screen allows you to upgrade one random stat with the use of gold. Side-by-side -side comparisons of Archero shows you they too had an identical system for upgrading stats. Last page is the skill deck. Here you can reset the items in which you can access during your missions. This is essential for making sure that items you generally use are accustomed to using have a higher chance of dropping during your missions. Now, in my experience, it's absolutely necessary to stay on top of item upgrades. Overall damage output is very low until you get to higher quality items. Some of the mini bosses take way too long to kill. There are a few enemies that divide after you kill them. A few times, and each division has just as much health as the first. Without the right weapons and perks, you will spend a good chunk of time trying to defeat the mini bosses. This is where the similarities of Archero, which is similar to Binding of Isaac, come in. The missions are pretty easy to complete, but you're playing a game of chance with the perks you collect. Sometimes you'll get an amazing set of perks, which allow you to go through the rooms with ease, including the mini bosses and final boss. Sometimes you'll get poor perks. When you encounter that poor luck, you end up spending a lot of unnecessary time with the bosses. I ran into that situation a few times and ended up becoming reckless by getting close to the enemies to reduce the amount of bullet travel there is in order to kill the bosses quicker. Now I've mentioned all these similarities, but there is one unique feature which I really do enjoy. You have the option to let the game play itself for you. In the top left corner, there's an auto button. When you press that button, your character will begin to move on its own, you will even dodge and use grenades. Now, with as good as the auto button is, it is never going to be as good as human interaction. I found on a few occasions, using this led to my character becoming close to death. When I play, I never get that close to death, given how much health my character has. The system is not perfect, but in situations where you need to focus on something else, but you do not want to waste the opportunity to progress, this is a very handy feature. Overall, I give this game a 3 out of 5. The game is enjoyable. I do wish they'd bring landscape mode. There's a nice variety of weapons, armor, and pets, so there's always something you can strive for to better your character by completing those missions. Where the game loses points is in two things. A lot of the components of Mystic Gunner were taken from Archero. As enjoyable Mystic Gunner can potentially be, it loses points in creativity. The mechanics of some of the bosses make for a very drawn out fight. This may become better later as you progress and acquire stronger weapons, but having bosses such as this from the beginning makes the overall appeal of the game diminish. I hope you enjoyed today's review of Mystic Gunner. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to be notified when another video releases. Also, check out some of the other video reviews. GG's everyone. Have a nice day.